Paris-Roubaix, the hell of the north. It's a bike race like no other. With its long, brutal, bone-rattling cobble sectors, it is undoubtedly one of the toughest races in the pro calendar. Over the years, we have seen all sorts of bike tech being used at the race. We've had special frames made with suspension in, we've had suspension in the forks, the stem, special wheels made, and tires. We've pretty much seen it all at this race. But what tech are we gonna see at the race this year? Well, I've managed to get my hands on two of the bikes from the two teams that won the men's and the women's race last year. So let's go see what they're gonna be riding. This is definitely one of my favorite races to watch. Cobbles and finishing on a velodrome. What's not to love? If you wanna watch all the action, make sure to head over to GCN Plus to watch live and on demand. So first up, I've managed to get my hands on the Trek Segafredo women's team's bikes. Now I'm very excited about this because they are the only team that have ever won the women's race. Yes, there's only been two editions, but they won with Lizzie Deignan and last year with Elisa Longo Borghini. So there is definitely something special about these bikes, but will they win this year? Well, there's only one way to find out. Make sure to tune in over on GCM Plus. But this is the Trek Domane Mark IV. And they've got a brand new paint job for this year, which it looks incredible. I'm a big fan of this paint job. I haven't seen anything quite like this before, but I asked the team mechanics if there's anything you know special about the paint job. Does it mean anything, any meaning behind it? I know I was quite sure, but I think it's kind of like a merge of the men's and the women's team colours. So the red of the men's and the blue of the women's, and maybe like a bit of cobble theme in there as well. They have got a picture of a cobblestone on the seat tube. So I'm gonna go with that. Um, but it definitely does look incredible. Let me know your thoughts on it down in the comment section below. So they have the Demane frame, which has ISO speed suspension in the top tube by the seat post there. And that gives the bike a little bit of flex and adds a little bit more comfort for the rider, especially going over the rough cobbles. So Paris-Roubaix is a relatively flat course, so the team have opted to use a SRAM one by chain ring on the front, which is a 52 tooth. And they also have a K-Edge um, mount there as well, which is gonna stop any chain drops. Um, so the girls just gonna be in big ring the whole time. And then on the back, they've got a 1033 cassette on the rear. Now coming up to the cockpit, they're riding up a Traeger bar and stem, and they've actually got three sets of shifting options on here. So they've got the normal shifters here, then it, they've got shifters just on the drops here, and they've actually got them on the top of the bars as well. And the mechanic was telling me they could literally put these shifters anywhere. They could put them, because they're wireless, in their back pocket if they wanted to, absolutely anywhere on the bike, but they've chosen those three spots there because when you're on the cobbles, on the hoods isn't always the best place to hold your bars. Sometimes, you know, a lot of riders opt for the tops here. So that's why they've done that. So when it comes to the bar tape, I thought there would be no question about it. All teams would double wrap the bar tape because think about it, your hands are taking a lot of the bumps from those cobbles. And if you remember watching the very first women's edition of Paris Bay where Lizzie Diagnan didn't wear gloves and her hands were covered in blood at the end. So I thought, you know, most teams, you know, would have double bar tape, but um, mechanic was saying that it's optional for the girls. Some of the girls would choose to have just a single and some will have double. So it's, yeah, rider's preference. But moving on to the wheels, which is obviously a big topic in Paris-Roubaix, but the team have gone for the Bontrager Aeolus 37V wheels with Pirelli TLR tyres, tubeless, and I did ask about tyre pressure, and they said to be confirmed, but today they are actually doing their recon, so I'm guessing at the end of the day, they will have a very good idea of what tyre pressure they want in the race. I mean, the team could already know what tyre pressure they're riding, they just don't actually want to tell me. And then right at the bottom of the seat post there, they have got the little race uh, mount number, which the race number will be attached to on race day. So the ISO speed suspension in the frame there actually gives between 10 and 20 mil of flex in the frame, which isn't lows, but it is definitely gonna help when it comes to riding on those cobbles. So finishing off the bike, the girls have got a Bontrager saddle and a K-Edge mount with a Wahoo on the front, but a pretty incredible looking bike, if I do say so myself. 
So it's not only a different bike that the team are using, but they're actually using a different car. So they're using the BMW X1, which is a little bit of a bigger car up from the ground a bit more. And I was thinking, oh yeah, to absorb the bumps a little bit more, but it's basically so they don't rip the bottom of the car off when they're going on the cobbles and say if they have to, you know, speed up to a rider in the breakaway where they really have to put the, their foot down on the gas they're not gonna take the bottom of the car off. So yeah, they've really thought of everything in this race. It's not just about the bikes, but the cars as well. I am now at the Ineos Grenadiers service course in Belgium. And if you didn't know, a service course is essentially where teams keep all of the bikes, all of the spares. There's literally hundreds of bikes, hundreds of wheel, all the clothing that the team needs. We've got mechanics working on the bikes as well. And I wish I could take you through all of the bikes. But Ineos Grenadiers was actually the team that won Paris Bay last year with Dallon Van Baal. But he's actually moved on to Yumba Visma for this year. But I'm still here to see what bike they're going to be using at the race. So this is a Filippo Ganna's bike that he'll be riding at Paris Bay. And I know what you're thinking, it looks pretty much identical to the bike that you'd ride for any other race. A completely different approach to what the Trek Segafredo's women team have done, where they have a completely different frame with a little bit of suspension. This is pretty much exactly the same setup as you drive for any other race. There are a few little details that they have changed. So let me show you. So one of the changes that they have made is a double wrap the bar tape, which I guess is quite standard for Paris Bay. A lot of riders do choose to do it, but Mechanic said it is personal preference. But Filippo Ganna has gone for the double bar tape. And again, they have shifters on the top here, which again, personal to the riders. So the mechanic said, some riders have it, some riders don't. Felipe Gana clearly likes to hold the tops there. So he's gone for some extra shifters on the top. So apart from the double wrap in the bar tape, but the shifters and the wider tires, not much has changed for Team Ineos's bike for Paris Bay. but the rest of the bike is still pretty special. So let me take you through it. So the tires that the team have opted for are the Continental GP5000 STR and they are 32 millimeter wide. So a little bit wider than what Trek were using and they were using 30s, but the Pinarello F will actually take a wider tire. But what the mechanic was telling me is that it, if they did go for a wider tire and it was a really wet, muddy day, all that mud would kind of get clogged up in the frame and it wouldn't leave much room for it to get out and it would basically cause havoc. So 32 millimeter wide and they were saying that this is the widest tire that the team will use all year. And when it comes to tyre pressure, they told me they don't know. Although I definitely think that's a lie, they 100% know. But tyre pressure seems to be a big secret in cycling, especially when it comes to Paris-Roubaix. So as I mentioned, this is the Pinarello Dogma F in the Team Ineos colours. And Philippe Gana actually rides quite a large bike. This is a 59.5 and I'm a big fan of the paint job. But there's one little detail on Philippe Gana's bike that no other rider has. And it is on the top tube and it says Top Gana. Nice little touch there, something a little bit personal that probably gives him quite a bit of motivation when he looks down. I am Top Gunner. Team Ineos are running the Shimano Durace group set and we've got a 5440 chainring on the front and an 1130 at the back. So apparently that is the optimal gear range for Pyro Bay, but I'm not sure he's going to be in that little ring for much of it. But they've also got a K-Edge cane catch catcher on the inside there, just in case there is a chain drop. But Fingers crossed there won't be. But you never know with those cobbles. They rattle everything around. So the wheels that the team are opting to use are the Shimano Durace C50 wheels. Nice carbon bad boys, pretty deep. And in the past we have seen all sorts of different material used in wheels, but these are pretty much the wheels that the team would use for any other race. So hopefully they can take the beat in of the cobbles. So the little details finishing off this bike, we've got a physique saddle, we've got a little very minimalistic race number mount here. We've got the name sticker on both sides. And I've also noticed a little chip in the frame there, a very tiny, but they need to sort that. They need to get some nail polish out and uh, cover that up. Just a note for Lee Bogana. So we've got Shimano Duro's pedals. We've got elite water bottle cages and elite water bottles, but I'm just gonna do some tests for him just to make sure his bottles don't fall out on the cobbles. Mm. Yeah, it should be all right. So for the cockpit, we've got most handlebar and stem integrated, and we've got most handlebar tape, double taped for Filippo Ganna. And finishing off, we've got a Garmin up front. I mean, I feel like that's another thing that could potentially fall off in Paris Bay. I remember riding on cobble, cobbles once and my head unit went flying. I did get it back though, don't worry. 
Another insy, tiny little detail that I've spotted is this tiny sticker on the seat post here. And this is quite an important little sticker because once the rider's saddle height is measured to the exact millimetre, so it is perfect, this sticker is then put on. But once the sticker is on, the riders and the mechanics are able to tell if this sticker slowly slips away into the frame, that the seat post is slipping a little bit and then they know why well, we need to put it back up to this exact measurement. So this is something that you all could do at home if you are suffering with your seat post slipping and you're unsure about your saddle height. You can put a tiny little marker, a little sticker, a bit of tape, it can be anything, on the seat post right there. And then if it slowly disappears, you know that you're saddle is slipping. And of course, finishing the bike off in style, we've got some tan sidewalls and some muck off valves. So those are the bikes of Team Ineos Grenadiers and Trek Segafredo. Very, two very different approaches. The Trek Segafredo team using a completely different bike just for this race, but Ineos kind of using the same bike as they normally would. But there is another little bit of bike tech that is new on the scene this year that rumours have it, Team DSM and Jumbo Visma are going to be using it, and that is adjustable tyre pressure system. Now I wasn't able to get my hands on those team bikes this year, but I am going to do my best to tell you a little bit about them. So this is going to be the very first time that an adjustable tyre pressure system is used in a World Tour race. And essentially what it is, is a Bluetooth system that is mounted to the handlebars that allows the riders to change the tyre pressures as they please. So they could hit the cobblestones and deflate the tyres a little bit. And then when they get back on the smooth tarmac, press the button again and it will add more pressure to the tyres. And apparently there is quite big savings to had to do in this. But I really do hope the teams have tested this thoroughly because I would not want to be the rider that is on those cobblestones, lets a bit of air out the tyres, gets onto the smooth tarmac and it doesn't pump back up again. But I'm not too sure how much pressure the riders are going to be letting out of their tyres for the cobbles, but hopefully we can find out after the race. So it's only those two teams, Jumbo Visma and DSM, that we know are going to be using this system in the race. But it'll be really interesting if this is the next big thing in Paris Roubaix bike tech. I would love to hear your thoughts on it down in that comment section as well. But just chatting from to the Ineos Grenadiers mechanics and the Trek mechanics this morning, they were pretty unsure whether this system is going to work. So it'll be very interesting to see if it does take off. So there we have it, two of the best bikes that will be riding Paris Roubaix this weekend. But will they come out on top this year? There's only one way to find out. Make sure to head over to GCM Plus and watch the action unfold. But let me know down in the comment section below what you thought of the bikes. And if you were riding, would you ride any different sort of bike tech? I know I would definitely need a bit of suspension on there because those cobbles are absolutely brutal. But if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up.